viewer. Welcome again to our blessing season of 40 days of prayer. Today is day six, and we are experiencing the grace of God, the miracle of our lifetime. God is blessing our hearts, giving us peace, and I'm glad this morning, one more time, from this part of the world, I know wherever you could be, maybe it could be uh, noon or uh, evening, but I'm glad that this is morning here. And I want to invite you once again in a very special way to be part of this, um, you know, uh, worship moment, an hour or a moment with the Lord. And this is for the days of prayer, as we all know. And I want to invite you this morning, our thought says, mission, get involved. And this particularly is the appeal from the church leader, uh, Elder Tent, Pastor Ted Wilson, and he is a, making a passionate appeal uh, that we all may get involved in mission. But I, I want to share with us from the book of Mark chapter 4, a very interesting experience here. Mark noted one of the parables of Jesus, but before we get there, let us seek the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, thank you for this precious, uh, special moment when we can talk to you and speak to you and hear you uh, in this hour of prayer. And Lord, I pray that you will bless us, bless me, and touch my thoughts and my lips to speak from you and of you, and bless my viewer wherever they are. And Lord, this moment we shall be blessed of you with the unique, special blessings, even the showers of the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mark chapter 4, Jesus is teaching disciples and um, the Bible says in verse number 1, and he began again to teach by the seaside and there was gathered unto him a great multitude so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell back by the wayside, and the foes of the air came and devoured it, and some fell on the stony ground, where it had no much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had not depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And verse number seven goes on to say, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and they did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears, to hear, let him hear. Powerful parable of Jesus about the sower, but by I like uh, calling it the parable of the soils. I know many of us call it the parable of the sower, but I like calling it the parable of the soils. Why? Because I see here we are given four different types of soils. When, when you read this account in the book of uh, Matthew, Matthew says, um, of course, even Mark is noting in verse number 8, and other fell on good ground. Some versions will say on good soil, and it yielded. So the problem in this parable is not the sower. Now, the sower in the parable is God himself. The seed is the word of God. That is what God is sowing. But the soils, the soil is the heart of men. So the problem of the parable is not with the sower. The problem in the parable is not in the seed. The problem in the parable is with the soil. Jesus is speaking about the types of soil and says there is only one soil where the seed will be sold and will germinate and will grow and will thrive and will bear fruit, not just fruit, but many fruits. You see, friends, 
as we take time in the season of prayer for the 40 days, it is paramount that we address the issue of our soils, the issue of our hearts. Now, this one that is coming to us in these 40 days, where is it landing? Where is it landing? How is your soil? How is your heart? You see, if your heart is not well prepared, if your heart is not what the Bible calls the good soil, the sower will sow. And I am, uh, as a servant of God, I'm sowing this in these 40 days. And of course, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the word of God, we are sowing the seed of revival and reformation. But the question is, where is it landing? How is your heart? How is the soil of your heart? Are you able to receive the word? And are you able to retain the word of God? Are you able to allow the word of God to germinate? You see, the word has power. The seed has, has power within itself. You just sow the seed and leave it. It has a way of germinating and growing. But and exactly that is the power of the word of God. It, it, the power of God, the, the word of God, you know, is double-edged. It kind of crows, it, it penetrates and pierces through even to, the, to the, the, the piercing of the heart, breaking of the bones and the marrows, you know. There's the power of the word of God. So we have no problem with what the word of God can do. But we have a problem with what your heart does with the word of God. This is the problem here. How is your heart treating the word of God? How is is your heart treating the word of God? Now, if, if your heart is not receptive to the word of God, if your heart is not conducive for the word of God, if your heart is not prepared to support the word of God to cause his miracle of power to grow in you the fruit of the spirit, then the fault days of prayer shall come and pass. And there will be no revival or no reforms in your life. It's my prayer this moment, as you take a while to pray, that you may consider to talk to your own heart. You may consider to bring your heart to the Lord, that he can examine it and dissect it. And, 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 and if he finds it's a ground that is not fit for his word, that it may make you miss out in the blessing so set for the 40 days of prayer, then God is able also to come in and remove your heart and give you a new heart that God can say, there's new heart now can make my word grow, thrive, and cause a transformation in your life. And so it's a matter of your heart. And this morning, just bring your heart to the Lord. Bring it to the Lord. That he can change it. He can change it. When the soil is unproductive, the farmer has a responsibility of putting manure Preparing the soil well that the seed will be able to germinate and grow well. And this is what the fourth days of prayer has brought to you. It's a way of preparing your heart to allow the word of God to thrive and cause a revival and transformation that is needed. That your, the reforms in your life may lead you to walk the path of righteousness. I want you to join with me as we pray. And I'm checking, and I see today we have a number of prayer requests to pray for. Pray for a, a fresh understanding of God's word and for an open heart so that the world can reshape your personal beliefs and values. This is what we pray for. Just allow the word of God to work in you. Number two, pray for our brothers and sisters in Shagai, our brothers and sisters also in Russia, in Ukraine, and there's that situation, the church there. Let's remember them because they need our prayer. Let's pray for children, um, a, a children's book and magazine that have recently been written specifically for the Ukrainian people that these special resources will be timely and reach many hearts of the kingdom. Let's also pray that the, the appeal, Jesus is coming, get involved, we will take urgent priority in your daily life. Let's pray 
for our own revival and reformation. Let's pray for our church. Let's pray for the meetings that have been prepared. Let's pray for our nation, this country, Kenya, because we are in the election season. Let's pray for peace. But more importantly, let's pray that the hearts of our church members will be well prepared to receive the word of God and also that each one of us may intentionally get involved in mission that we can hasten the second coming of Christ. So join with me wherever you are as you seek him this morning in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of prayer. There is no any other moment that can compare with a moment with you in prayer. This is where lives are changed, transformed. This is where we see visions. This is where we have our faces shining with your glory. This is where you direct our thoughts and our intentions. It's from this, our Lord, that we learn to see you in clarity and appreciate your will and your purposes. Specifically, this day, Lord, we are focusing on our hearts because the parable of the good soils, so-called the parable of the sower, is not about God. The problem is not with God or with the seed, which is the word. The problem is the heart where the word of God lands after being spoken. And the question is, is my heart considered as a good soil for your word? Is the heart of my viewer considered this morning, this moment, as a good soil for your word? If our hearts, the soils of our hearts are not well, are not good, then the experience of 40 days of prayer shall be in vain. And so, Lord, we are seeking that truly you will come and expose our wickedness and expose our challenges and our filthiness and expose, our, our, you know, our very evil thoughts and inclinations that make our hearts not be good soils for your word. Lord, we pray that you can remove our stony hearts and give us hearts of flesh that we can receive your word and allow the seed of your word to germinate in us that we can bear the fruit of the spirit. The Lord, you shall be prepared for the second coming. And so, Lord, this day, we are seeking for a changed heart. We are seeking for conversion of our hearts. Many of us, we are in church for many years. We are serving, yet we have not been converted. Father, Father this morning, we pray that you can convert our hearts, create in, her, in us new hearts, that we shall receive the power of the Holy Spirit. For it is a broken and contrite spirit that you desire. And Lord, we seek you in these 40 days of prayer on this specific day, that you shall renew our hearts and our spirits to yearn more for things of heaven and equip us with your blessings and prepare us for the second coming. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for being part of this uh, ministry of prayer. Pray for me as I pray for you. Pray for this particular ministry. And I want to invite you, if you have not subscribed to our channel where you are getting these messages every day, please just click that red button down there. Just click it. But also request you to share. Just go there and share this link, these summons, these messages, uh, these inspirational moments with the prayer. Share with as many people as you can. Remember? the seven-member list that you ought to have you are praying for. And just talk to me. Tell me how is the experience. Tell me who you are praying for. Tell me how you are experiencing through this journey that we all may be blessed of the Lord. Cheer with me tomorrow. May God be with you.